Hey everybody and welcome to Wild Ride with Steve-O. Oh boy did we laugh really hard on this episode. And I revealed something uh, that's pretty embarrassing for me, okay? And Travis told a crazy story about Knoxville. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Pastrana. Yeah, dude. <laughs> What's up, steve -O? Good to see you, bud. Good to see you too, man. I want to introduce my co-host, Scott Randolph. What's up, dude? Oh, Scott, how you doing? Good. Coming from off camera, you'll hear the voice of the very gorgeous Paul Brisky. What's up, dude? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. Good. So thanks for doing this, man. Um, you just did uh, the big stunt in Annapolis, huh? How recent was that? Uh, yeah, just uh, actually about two weeks ago. So it was been pretty cool. I mean, Ken Block, um, you know, was a friend for a while. Started out as a sponsor uh, with DC Shoes, and then became a good friend and we both were teammates at, at Subaru. And then he went on to Ford, became my biggest rival, uh, started Jim Connor, just basically having fun in his, his car. And, um, he took it to like the next level of, of kind of like drifting all wheel drive and awesome locations and more horsepower than's ever been in there. And, uh, he kind of was like, all right, let, let's see, let's, let's give you a shot. So, um, you know, needed a good location, picked Annapolis, Maryland, which is my hometown, all the roads and all the, the jumps and the, the crossings that I always wanted to do, but, could never legally do. Uh, <laughs> we got the cops on our side and uh, politicians supported us, even though uh, some of the town's people were a little like, are you sure? A thousand horsepower Subaru ripping around uh, historic Annapolis brick roads. And uh, oh, dude, it was awesome. All right. How long does it take you to get clearance for that? Like, uh, when's the idea come about? And then Said when? For a whole year, huh? You were working on it. Yeah. A whole year. Yeah. COVID didn't help because all the schedules kind of like we had to be there when no one else was really there. The boat shows. I mean, Annapolis is awesome. It's got um, you know, the Naval Academy, it's got all the military, all the motorheads, guys that love loud noises and guns. And then you've got the sailors. Um, so <laughs> you kind of have both, both worlds there that, uh, that kind of collide. But uh, no, we, we had a lot of fun. And um, we know most of the, the firefighters and the cops and all the guys that didn't make it in motocross uh, all went military. So um, definitely had a lot of backing that way. Uh, but just trying to clear it to convince all the locals that I wasn't going to drive the car right through their shops which almost happened a few times, but rather be lucky than good, I always say. Nice. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did hear you say that, but I was just looking at you, and I'm like, man, we're the same age, but you're just so much cooler than I am, dude. <laughs> no, no one has ever said that about me. <laughs> yes, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> Man, um, I, I went to high school with um, this buddy. His name is Franz, and he lives in Maryland. And of all the people I've known since high school, I would say Franz and I are dudes who like were able to make careers out of doing what we what we love, what we want. And what he, what Franz does is builds rally cars. Oh, really? Pretty rad. Did did we meet him on tour? I'm sure. Yeah. Uh huh. At the, the the draft house in Arlington. Yeah, that's right. We had in. we had dinner. Franz um, was on your skate team, no? On he H was. Road. He was on H he Road. He rode for H Road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, um, so in any case, shout out to my buddy. He makes rally cars. But the real question is, do you even drift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly, dude, this was the hardest thing because I basically Subaru came to me and said, "What do you want out of a car?" And I said, I want to shatter hill climb records. I want an unlimited open car. Give me the most downforce possible. Give me a wing that I can actually fly it. So like, <laughs> you know, usually for jumping a vehicle, you know, a semi truck and a bus and a motorcycle, they all jump about the same. But depending on the takeoff angle, it matters if the, the vehicle's front end low or front end high. And I, I wanted to go for a 300 foot jump by the house. Um, just, it was just basically a hill, a natural hill that you could jump after you hit it about hundred miles an hour. And we did the calculations on this uh, this app for an iPhone that said you had to hit it about 135. <laughs> so I hit it at 138, and we forgot to calculate the downforce. Oh, came up short, broke pretty much. I mean, I thought I broke my back. The whole car should have broken in half. I bounced another 150 feet down the backside of the, this hill. Um, so, yeah, math's not really my strong point, but uh, <laughs> this car was absolutely awesome. But it had so much downforce that it actually made it more difficult to drift. I got the, the most traction, the most power. I mean, first gear mm -hmm. idles at like 70 miles an hour. And then <laughs> Ken's like, okay, you got to do some back it in around this little tight areas and going around tires and trash cans. I'm like, no, this, this thing's made for going 150 mile an hour up a one lane road in a, in a mountain. So uh, <laughs> I, I might've gone the wrong direction with the build, but it's, it's going to be sweet when we get it for racing. 
That's cool. Yeah. Jesus. When, when you say uh, by the house, this is like your nitro circus compound, basically, right? The, the world calls it Pastrana Land. I just, I just call it home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pastrana Land. And, and I remember uh, our Jackass director, who also directed your uh, Nitro Circus MTV show, he told me that the, like, what do you call it? The uh, air, the, when they helicopter yeah. people to the hospital, what do they call that? Air oh, life life. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. He's yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, the, the, John. The, the, the people who fly the helicopters for the hospital, like, they know exactly where your house is. Like, all they. Yeah, but to be fair, most of the people that go into that, that, uh, uh most of the pilots around here, they're all friends. And if you're into doing dangerous stuff, or I shouldn't say dangerous, I mean, not like jackass <laughs> dangerous where you guys just like, intentionally like this is gonna suck like you know I mean, right i mean you know that takes more balls in my opinion like i always naively think that i'm gonna land all the stupid shit that i try um where we usually don't but at least we think we do uh but at the end of the day like all the military guys around here i mean my best friend growing up was a navy and ended up being a navy seal uh, until a couple years back and um they're all pilots and military and and uh guns and shooting and, and skydiving and so if you're in the police or you're in firefighters or you're flying anything around this area chances are we grew up together so it's uh <laughs> Got you know it. and and plus we had uh yeah what was it we called it uh I think Black Wednesday it was a really bad day for us. We had uh, three life flights the same day during oh. when we were we were young and dumb and um, filming for one of the first Nitro Circus uh, DVDs. Uh -huh. um, we put a thousand dollars on the win, and we sent three people that had well more than a thousand dollars worth of uh, medical bills. Oh. But it, it was totally worth it. Good times. <laughs> Jesus. Um, when so Nitro Circus started way before it was an MTV show. I remember when uh, I was in rehab. A roommate of mine was was just going crazy about, oh, dude, Nitro Circus, these DVDs, man. Oh, dude, you got to check it out. And uh, pretty shortly thereafter, it ended up that uh, it, Nitro Circus became an MTV show with Jeff Tremaine. Mm -hmm. um, but when did the Nitro Circus start? So Nitro Circus was born uh, pretty organically through me getting injured, getting bored, having Pastrana Land, if you will, out back, and having the best guys in the world wanting to learn um tricks wanting to learn backflips and we had kind of because freestyle was really new i mean i mean didn't even go in the x game as far as motocross until 1999 so i already had kind of racing sponsorship and kind of a way to pay for uh my fun which was freestyle motocross so carrie hart had the first foam pit um but he didn't let a lot of guys kind of ride it um, where I had a phone pit and I was like, yeah, come on out. Let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone would come here and, and learn stuff. So I was 18, 19, 20 years old. And um, I got a camera from Greg Godfrey, uh, who was, I mean, he worked as a key grip on Touched by an Angel and he just wanted to be a producer. And then he realized that, you know, I just like riding dirt bikes. And if I could film dirt bike stuff, that'd be great. But he couldn't get any riders to go out to the desert and go places. So he called me up. He's like, hey, can you get the riders to go do this stuff? And I'll film it all and we'll pay for it all. And, you know, no one got paid, but we all got to do these awesome trips. And then, you know, we had video to show for it and sponsors were stoked. Um, so every time I got hurt, I just had a camera. I mean, white balance wasn't set. The uh, ND filter, <laughs> I didn't know anything about anything. I just, you know, Sony 2000, little hand camera. That thing was, was I was worked and the footage was, the film quality was horrible. But the actual content, kind of got like, uh, I mean, not a jackass following, but it was a pretty good following for just a bunch of rednecks riding dirt bikes. So we were, uh, we were stoked. And then, uh, when evil can evil, um, you know, when he passed away, we got a call from Johnny Knoxville, actually uh, Knoxville called, um, Matt Hoffman and Hoffman put him in touch with me. He's like, Hey, what can you do? We got a 24 hour takeover of, of MTV. What can you do? And I sent him like a 30 page list. He's like, he called me up. He's like, Hey, can you do any of this? I said, I don't know. We'll try it all. <laughs> and a week later, we were pitching a show on MTV. <laughs> yeah. And and I suppose in between there for the Evil Knievel thing, Dick House, which is uh, Jeff Tremaine, Johnny Knoxville, Spike Jones, they were making a tribute to Evil Knievel. And that was when Knoxville uh, broke his wiener. That is that is accurate. You know, it's, it's really kind of foreshadowing. He, uh, he can't ride like... 
the, literally when you say someone can't ride, you're like, oh, he was acting like he couldn't ride that. No, like the man, he is the worst motorcycle ride I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and we had to like bump start him in second gear. And I was like, just pin it when you hit the bottom. He's like, look, is this going to hurt? I'm like, yeah, it's going to suck. You'll be lucky not to break something. He's like, as long as I don't break my dick. <laughs> and, off to the rip, and sure enough. Okay. Yeah, right down on the handlebar to the urethra. Well, I remember uh, it being described to me that you said, because he was going to knock, so that was the bit, that as a tribute to Evil Knievel, he was going to try to recreate the double backflip, which at that point <laughs> had been pulled by nobody but you, Travis Pastrana, right? Like in competition, you were the only one to do a double backflip. So Knoxville says, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the double backflip. And uh, they said that you told him, that's great. Go for it. But whatever you do, just don't let go of the bike. Because if you let go of the bike, it's going to it's it's gonna leave you in a vertical fashion which means it's gonna come back down and land on you and that's what you don't want so so make sure you hold on to the bike and Noxo goes flying up and the fucking first <laughs> yeah, thing he course. does is let go of the Throws bike the bike in the air and it comes right back down on the land the bike landed on his dick and broke his urethra and he had a fucking catheter tube down his dick for for fucking dude i think he kept that as a badge of honor for way longer than he needed it Dude, Knoxville's the only one. I, I don't even think, not that it was that long ago, but I don't think he'd get away with this today. And I know nobody else on the face of the earth could ever get away with what he did. We we're on a Southwest flight. You know the story Travis is about to tell is killer. And I'm going to tell you something that probably nobody in their right mind would ever say out loud. For years, I have worn only boxers that are basically plaid, dark color. And the reason for that... I've struggled with skid marks, okay? And that's because wiping your butt with toilet paper doesn't do a good job. It ends up with your butthole being itchy. And then you want to scratch it. And when you scratch it, your, your underwear gets skid marks, okay? And that's why I go with dark underwear that doesn't show skid marks. But it's not a problem for me anymore, man, because I use a bidet on my toilet and I've said this before, this is my favorite product that I've ever promoted on the podcast, okay? It's called Hello Tushy, and you get it at hellotushy.com. Of course, if you go to hellotushy.com slash Stevo, you get a much better deal, but what is it and how does it work? It's a bidet, right? When you get done taking your sloppy dump, you twist this little knob right here and blah, blasts your asshole. And it blasts it like a pressure cleaner. It makes it so perfect and clean. And then when you wipe, there's nothing there to make a skid mark with. So you need this thing. I'm telling you, it's my favorite. And how are you going to get it? You're going to go to hellotushy.com slash stevo. And you're going to get 10% off your order. So get 10% off your order at hellotushy.com slash stevo. Now let's hear about Knoxville. I'm four rows in front of him, and he had a, a catheter that, that made it that far. And <laughs> I'm sound asleep, mouth wide open up there. He puts the catheter oh. over the top of my shoulder. Everyone's giggling. He, like, literally goes back four rows. People he doesn't know. And they're like, oh, that's Knoxville. This is going to be great. And he pisses on me in a plane from four rows back. In a regular commercial Southwest flight. I wake up, everybody's laughing. I'm thinking, how did he get away with this? And and I was pissed on. So at you know, 30,000 feet. Wow. Good times. But only wow. Knoxville. Dude, he, he's got that, that the way about him. That's yeah, a good bit. he does have that way about him. He can get away with stuff. It's uh, yeah, and he had the bag strapped around his ankle. He called it his lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how long did he have this catheter? Dude, he kept that thing for fucking years, man. <laughs> years, I mean, years. It Wonder. happened in, in when? When did that happen? Two thousand eight. Yeah, uh, I know he had it for at least a year and a half. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know. I think he just like the pranks he could pull with it. I mean, what do you do? Yeah. You got to keep taking that thing in and out, or do you just leave it in? I don't know. Taking I, I, it out and putting it back in, I think, is the bad part of it. Like, once it's in, it's not so bad. I I had a buddy's dad who had a catheter in, but, like, when you put the catheter in, I think it blows up to, like, a balloon inside to, like, keep it in there. 
and he came to in the hospital bed. He's like, what the fuck? And he tried to pull it out, and the balloon was up, and it just wouldn't go out. And just oh, kept... <laughs> he came to? <laughs> um, yeah, I had a buddy. I mean, you know the... Um... I might not want to identify the person, but they, remember the the uh, murder ball? They're, yeah, they're, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> they're, they're, not 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 Zupan, but there there's oh, another okay. another guy, and, and we were we we're partying together. He's another guy. And, you know, all the murder ball was uh, these this uh, sport for like, like para athletes, like yeah, uh, paraplegics. Para, yeah, para, like um, paralyzed guys. And this one guy I was hanging out with partying. And and uh, he's like, oh, dude, can you help me with my catheter? Right, he's all hammered. He's got to pee, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm a bro. And uh, I, I I grabbed his wiener. I put the catheter. In. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's nice of you. Yeah, wow. like, and I was like, hey, dude, no big deal, man. I, I'm I'm cool like that. I'm very secure with myself. So <laughs> how do you get a catheter in there? I would it like do you kind of have to hold I, it and like I mean you spit on it. <laughs> Shut up. Just, you got to get it wet. Had, you got to jerk it. Get, yeah, get it hard. <laughs> I can't remember it. I, 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 it was a long, long, long time ago. Damn. But yeah, uh, th these guys are. I'm, I'm a little. Con I'm a little concerned about that because they do have use of their arms. They're playing. For <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. Yeah, why would he need help with the catheter? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a quadriplegic. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. That's fucking hilarious, dude. That's funny. Oh dude. my god. Okay, so Knoxville breaks his dick. Next thing you know, you're you're pitching a, a, an MTV show. He's like Knoxville wanted help too. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, hey, let let me go into the worst pit. The world's worst pitch <laughs> ever. <laughs> Can you help me with my catheter? Before I went in with Knoxville and Tremaine. We had done a lot of pitches and always got kind of pushed aside and nothing went through. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, we'll call you. Uh-huh, sure, whatever. Well, we went in with Knoxville and Tremaine. Now, Knoxville goes in, and he's got a bunch of wicks attached to big old huge things of duct tape. But the wicks are like, it's a live wick that he was lighting on fire. So he walks into MTV lighting wicks fire in the hole long wicks that were like you know 20 seconds long and he's throwing these uh these wicks that just go into duct tape and he's throwing them and everybody i mean these poor interns and people everyone's <laughs> dropping their phones computers are flying <laughs> off desks people are diving they're thinking that knoxville being knoxville is actually dropping like you know these huge things of uh, cherry bombs everywhere that's going to explode and then the whole office is diving on the floor and he's laughing nothing goes off because it's just wicks attached to nothing so we go in there. Everyone's kind of already a little uneasy, but everyone knows that, you know, Knoxville's in there pitching another show with Jeff Jermaine. We go in and, you know, I've done some fairly good pitches before. I was, you know, fairly articulate with how we've, we've worded things. And they said, okay, so what's this show about? And uh, Knoxville points to Jermaine and Jeff goes, all right, all right, all right. So um, <laughs> picture this. It's like jackass but they don't do drugs. <laughs> okay, so I'm like, that's your whole bit? That is your bit. No video, no anything. A month later, we had a show on MTV. So God bless. That's so funny. That's so funny. And uh, I remember I, I was newly sober, and they said, hey, man, come be uh, on the Nitro Circus show. You know, we're shooting something in California. And my question is, it, was there ever a cameo from somebody, a guest appearance on Nitro Circus, uh, and the person was a bigger pussy than I was <laughs> when I was on Nitro Circus? You know, what's <laughs> interesting? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no. Wait, what but happened? What was really interesting. <laughs> you would volunteer. You were like, I'm in. You just didn't want to. So Nitro Circus, it's all about, like, you actually have to do the stunt. <laughs> Whereas I feel jackass is just hit go, fall off a cliff or jump off a cliff. You know what I mean? Like down a hill, gravity, bulls. Like once you say go, you're in. Well, you had control of the, the throttle. Right. And you just wouldn't go fast enough to make it worthwhile. But you don't have control of a bull or right. dynamite yeah. or bees or guns. And I realized that that's what your guys stick was that you just you committed to doing something and then you, you didn't want to be the one that had to hurt yourself. 
I, do, I think that you've just about nailed it. And that's a problem like across the boards when you when you have to do something. It's so much easier to like close your eyes and stay still and wait for something awful to happen. <laughs> Then I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Knoxville goes, Bulls are a win win. I'm like, no. If it doesn't hit you, the footage is unusable. And if it hits you, you get hit by a bull. How is this a win win situation? Because <laughs> when you get hit in the nuts, you want your eyes closed. And I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm closing my eyes waiting for that. I have to have my eyes closed. Why? Because otherwise I'll flinch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so when I was on the Nitro Circus, the only fucking thing I was trying to do was going like a two foot tall, if two, like knee, <laughs> knee high. Like a knee high jump ramp, like the kind of fucking jump ramp that I pushed up against the wall to ride my skateboard up the wall. Yeah. Like fucking knee high. And I just got to ride a motorcycle off a two foot fucking jump ramp, landing in dirt, mind you. <laughs> and I could not bring myself to go off of a two foot jump ramp. Why? I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> so wait, what would you do? Like just veer to the side or stop wait, short? I, I think I would veer to the side. I would lay it down. I would kind of like, I don't know. I can't even remember, but it was awful, That's dude. So like weird. so Your that body just wouldn't let it happen. We have confirmation from Travis Pastrana. I was the biggest pussy on Nitro Circus ever, which yeah. is a little bit of a... Of, of an honor <laughs> <laughs> it's something hey travis the, the first episode of nitro circus w was that when your dad jumped off the boat I, I, am i right on that so yeah we went down to panama it wasn't the first episode but um yeah he so my dad always wore like just cut off jeans and he went down there in dc hooks him up with these uh you know these big old board shorts and he's stoked and plus he's a lot older now he jumped out of the boat so they, we're driving and he's yelling at us Hey, come on, you, you pussies, basically, jump out, jump. We're like, Dad, we're going 90. We're not jumping out of the boat. He's like, ah, fuck it, jumps out the boat. Well, he lands, and one, he's old. Two, we're going 90. Yeah. <laughs> and all the pieces of junk boats that we have back home, we had like, you know, checkmates and stuff. They did like 65, 70. That 20-mile-an-hour hits. So he goes in, and it rips his – so he does the splits when he lands. Well, he's, <sighs> he can't do the splits. It um, – he – shatters his pelvis oh. starts bleeding out now he's my dad's drill sergeant in the marine corps he doesn't doesn't you know ever let anyone see him in pain so he swims back to the oh. boat and he gets on and he pulls himself up broken pelvis bleeding out we didn't know it and he just kind of sits on the back for a while and i said dad are you okay he said nope <laughs> no one dying oh and everyone's kind of laughing and uh, like hey you want a you want a pain shot or you know because one of the, the doctors was on just saw him kind of seeing him kind of go white and uh, dad goes, yep. <laughs> I looked over. I'm like, holy shit, he is dying. Like, I've never seen him take so much. Like, he'll take Advil, but he doesn't believe in pain meds. He doesn't believe in, oh. like, anything. And I'm like, man, he just took a shot. And he'd never, if you ever ask him if he's hurt, he says no. I'm like, I really think he's dying. I said, hey, dad, you want to go back uh, back on shore? He's like, I need to go to the hospital. You know, I, whenever you guys are done this, I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> um so they're kind of going around. I'm like, you know, hey, guys, let's, let's head back. You know, we're, it's pretty rough out in Panama Canal. We head back. By this point, he's pretty white. and uh, But he's still, you know, so he gets up. He walks. Not well, mind you. Mm. But he he walks. You know, doesn't make too much of a face. Broken pelvis. Bleeding out. Walks to shore. Sits down. And we take back off going. Uh, well, he passes out on the on the, on the the shore. Uh, goes to it. And basically, they put him in shock trauma. Uh, two surgeries later. Uh, gave him blood for two days. And we had to go film the ne next gig in uh, Jamaica. So we fly out and not a single person on his whole level of the, of the hospital. It was a John Hopkins hospital. It was a real nice place. But he goes, my dad's thing when he got back, he goes, man, he goes, I showed up. The people at McDonald's spoke English. He goes, I got approached by 10 call women that all spoke English. He's like, not a single person the most educated place down there spoke any English. I woke up two days later, had no idea how I got there, why I was there, had surgery, got freaking oh, bags of blood attached and you fuckers left me like they said you were going to be fine so uh, anyway we have a good good family relationship there and uh he he hadn't done anything stupid since so, you're, so that, he did that was his last thing <laughs> he he didn't remember the actual accident you're telling me that he he lost all memory of, of all of it like he was he was pretty much dead like he uh, he bled bled out so uh, it took him took him three days to get back to where he was conscious again how do you bleed out when it what did he like cut internal in, internally uh yeah artery 
So basically, when you sh- shatter your, your pelvis, uh, the um, the femoral arteries right there, evidently. Jesus. Uh, but yeah, so he he bled bled like same. <sighs> we we had actually similar injuries. So he bled two thirds of his blood volume out, that, same as I did when I was like fourteen. So. Well, was that when you severed your spine? Yeah. So he did half of what I did. He did one <laughs> side where I did both both sides of the SI joint. And you <laughs> pass you passed out too, right? Yep. Well, I passed out right away. He's a little tougher. It took a bit longer to pass out. That was when you crashed into a tree? When you were no, no, I just didn't go fast enough. I landed short on a on like a 120-foot jump. Oh, my God. Now, we've had about a number of, uh, you know, professional skateboarders. We asked Danny Way, Tony Ryan Hawk. Sheckler. Tony Hawk actually hasn't had that many, like, grievous injuries and surgeries, I don't think. But uh, but Sheckler and Danny Way, absolutely. How do you think you stack up uh, next to Danny Way or Ryan Sheckler for having surgeries? I think both of them have had multiple knee surgeries, like shoulders, elbows, wrists, all of it. So if you look at BMX, uh, you know, you got like Evo Knievel, the pioneer. Uh, and then you got BMX, you have Matt Hoffman. In skate, you have Danny Way. And kind of in in moto rally now. That's kind of my like yeah. The, the, yeah. Just the the people that just not that we threw caution to the wind, but we were like, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Um, and then it kept getting up and kept pushing. I mean, probably the the only one I don't have topped of the current list has to be Matt Hoffman. That guy, yeah, dude, <laughs> he is the baddest dude living on the face of the earth today, hands down, without a doubt. Um, yeah. You know, Tony. He goes about stuff very methodically. He loves what he does, but he skates. He still skates pretty much every day. That's a guy that's, yeah. I mean, I, he's got to be in his 50s, right? I don't, 52. I mean, yeah. So Tony's in his 50s, still doing tricks that no one else has ever done, but he doesn't crash a lot. He's, he's right. you know, he's very calculated that way. Where a guy like Danny is like, yeah, I'm going to jump the Great Wall of China. Well, how, how do you build up to that? You know, <laughs> you're just kind of like, ah, yeah, I got this. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I've had 35 operations. And I'm 37 years old, so I'm crushing it. I was actually I had 34 <laughs> operations when I was 32, so I'm I'm definitely going the right direction here. Nice, yeah, oh, wow. dude. I, I love the way you broke that down. That that uh, BMX is Matt Hoffman, skating is Danny Way, and Moto is you, and you're all following in the footsteps of Evil Knievel. <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean it's beautiful. It's perfect, and I think that that probably sounds right because uh, Matt Hoffman is the most physically reconstructed human being i think in any sports and and probably even outside you'd have to have like really bad luck with car accidents to approach matt hoffman's level of surgery but matt finally gets he gets both shoulders he gets his back he gets his knees he gets his ankle and wrist everything done at once he's like (laughs) literally he's like 10 months where he can't do anything and he's getting back on and he's in yeah he goes i was going through a, a stop sign and me, me, he got run over by a tractor trailer, like a, a semi truck, <laughs> ran a red light, and he was back, broke everything again. Now, not to jump in someone else's story, and you guys got to gotta get him on for sure, yeah. but dude, this is the gnarliest footage I've ever seen. So it's uh, Dennis McCoy and uh, Matt Hoffman, and it's just them in the middle of Oklahoma um, on this quarter pipe or half pipe, and they're trying to do an over under cross or something. They got a camera. Well, uh, they head on collision. Um, one of them's knocked out. Matt's got a, a broken, like he's busted all up. Dennis has a broken back and they're laying there and it's just both of them kind of, uh, unconscious for a little bit. And then you see them both kind of come to, and they're both kind of like figuring out what's going on. And then it's Matt, uh, military crawling over to, to the golf cart <laughs> to, to jump in the golf cart, completely broken to go get help. So, um, you guys, that, wow. that's probably the gnarliest thing I've that's ever seen, rad. and it's all yeah. on just this GoPro sitting there. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> and he still he still rides every day. That guy's that guy's amazing. It, it's it's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, what, do you have any tricks coming up? Are you like after you accomplish something big like that? Are you like, all right, let me get, a, or do you have stuff in your mind that you that you still want to work on? I want to know. Do you have a video game? <laughs> because it seems like uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. You know, like, is there has there been a motocross video game or? Uh, yeah, back in the early 2000s, uh, Dave Mira and I both, so it was Dave Mira Pro BMX and Travis Trenna um, Pro Motocross, basically under the same Activision label as as uh, Tony. But uh, Tony's, I mean, that 
that actually that video game might have been what took action sports um to the the mainstream i mean that and x games all coming out i mean it was it was huge i mean everybody yeah. to this day still knows tony hawk and a lot of it is from the video game which is really really cool right uh but no we haven't haven't done a lot honestly i just that i'm that guy that loves to ride my dirt bike i love to drive i love to do stuff that's never been done um as far as like figuring out tricks and ramps and uh working with airbag landings and just that innovative oh. side. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, shit. Okay, let, let me ask you about this. Um, we, we're, uh, I'm, I'm planning just for my own, and it's something I wanted to do for the longest time, is to uh, uh, dress up as a crash test dummy and just drive a car into a wall, like uh, to, 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 to <laughs> test the airbag. I know that that doesn't really fit with my, like, you know, I, I I don't know how it'll go. I think I can. I think I'll pull it. But uh, what 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 do you think about that? And logistically, how how uh, do the the car we're thinking about using is uh from where when, when did we get it? Like 2015, 2015 Ford, Ford Fusion. And we just got to make sure that the airbag blows up. How do we know <laughs> that the airbags are still good from when we bought it in 2015? And <laughs> <laughs> The easiest way to get the airbags to go off is just take it over a jump. And the best part is you unhook your airbag, but you don't unhook the passenger's airbag. So you're laughing. You go over a jump Jesus. and it lands on the front end a little bit and pushes down the front end. And they're laughing all of a sudden, boom, straight to the back of the seat. Ah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's not uh, my I mean, style. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could be the passenger. I'll take you over a jump. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can have uh, oh, I fucking Travis hate ride it. I fucking hate that. But uh, but see, I feel like there's a way bigger idea here where you get like a car company to sponsor it, and it's a sort of an ad for them. Like we right. don't want to use a crash test dummy, so we're going to use a human to show you how safe our car is. And right. then we believe in our stunt. safety so much. Yeah. Yeah. Any dummies around here? <laughs> a crash test dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think that there, there there could be a big one there. Um, I gotta ask you: uh, Are your night terrors getting any better? I I, I heard. <laughs> I say we can cut that out if you want, but I, I was just I was so curious about that. We're gonna learn all about night terrors, but do you know what's even scarier? When your girl goes into your drawers and finds your bush out of control, and by bush, gentlemen, I mean your pubic hair. Are you grooming it properly like me? <laughs> because if you're not, thank God for Manscaped. That's what I use to keep my balls nice and trimmed, keep my package looking good. And speaking of package, Manscaped is ready for the holidays with the Perfect Package 3.0. That's the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. It is everything that you need to keep yourself groomed and in tip-top shape to get plenty of action with the ladies. So, gentlemen, how are you going to get this for yourself this holiday season? You're going to go to manscaped.com slash stevo, and that's going to get you 20% off your order and free shipping. That's 20% off your order and free shipping if you go to manscaped.com slash stevo. I'm telling you, it's important to look good like me. Now, let's talk about night terrors. Well, so we, I first, was in first Vegas job, and I got this... What are night terrors? I guess we're gonna Scott. Scott, you know, was was poking around the internet and, and uh, doing some research on you. He learns that that you have what's called night terrors. And what what does that even mean? Um, it's a good question. Kind of like you ever seen a Sixth Sense, like the, the I see dead people kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so everyone has a lot of. There's all different types or whatever. But I feel like I'm fully awake. Um, and obviously I'm not awake, but I feel like I am. I'm in play, the wherever I went to sleep, and you wake up, and um, a lot of weird stuff. Um, yeah, for instance, I knocked out my tooth. Uh, there was basically a big dog uh, chasing me, and I woke up, and I'm running, and I dove down the steps, and as I'm in the air diving down the steps, I'm like, there's no dog in my room, <laughs> and I busted out my, my front tooth. Uh, so that's the only tooth I lost. It was actually uh, from, from a night terror. Uh, you know, basically see stuff in the, in the fire, uh, when the fire is not on, um, it's, it's a little strange. Um, so interestingly enough, when you're traveling a lot and you run down a lot, you're 
run down on B vitamins. Uh, B vitamins is what's your energy, but that also creates melatonin. So melatonin is what helps keep you asleep. So a lot of times if you're really run down, you'll see a lot of the military guys have it. A lot of uh, action sports people have it. Uh, Sheckler actually has night terrors, which was really funny because I took off yelling, screaming, running one way. This is a long time ago. Sheckler was yelling, screaming, running the other way. And my roommate who normally, uh, Chris Haynes, who normally didn't care if he heard me running, he's like, I, he was like out the door in his underwear, like, what's going on? We're like, oh, just night terrors. He's like, well, if just one of you, I wouldn't have been so concerned. But two of you all running from opposite rooms in different directions. So does that, um, does so, that mean that, that it happens while you're asleep? Is it like a, a dreaming and you're having a nightmare kind of thing? or, or uh... Yeah, for the most part. So like, for instance, uh, my one of the first times I had a night terror, I was like 12 years old. And, um, you know, I was in a hotel room with my parents out in Vegas and they woke up and the doors open. I, my feet were all bloody. I had run about a half mile across the desert from, from our motel six, just in my underwear, barefoot, full sprint before you, I noticed that, uh, you know, that I was dreaming or what wow. I was running from. So, 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 so I go, go back to a couple years ago. Um, I was on an airplane and it was, I fell asleep while I was on the runway. And this is what I'm most afraid of is like this, you know, one of those, those, uh, agents are going to be on and i'm going to be running towards the cockpit luckily i was running towards the back of the plane and not towards the front of the plane screaming at the top of my lungs running as fast as i can to the back of the plane and we're still on the runway and they're like everyone please sit down so we can take off and i had to walk back past every one of these people (laughs) oh sorry my bad and i was like what the hell just happened so i try not to fall asleep on planes anymore although the night terrors are getting better uh, but I had an awesome hotel room in Vegas and um, I was about to go to sleep with all the doors open. And I was like, man, this is a bad idea. I'm going to wake up jumping off the side of the, the building. So I, I try to double latch all the doors and try to make sure that I, wow. I wake up before I do anything stupid. Is there any footage wow. of you having night terrors? No. No, and if there was, I would definitely not tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's crazy that you mentioned uh, vitamin B. I think it's 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 uh, when I was doing all my nitrous oxide, I, I would have these crazy fucking hallucinations, like super super involved. Like you know, I'm seeing stuff happening that's not really happening, and hearing voices, and all all the rest of it, and. Uh, I ended up doing some research as to like what the fuck is going on with it, and they said that that inhaling nitrous oxide, like as much as 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 that, reduces your vitamin B and leads to these crazy hallucinations. So maybe there's a connection there with night terrors. Yeah, I, it it could be uh like basically your your PTSD or whatever because a lot of military guys get it and whatever, and and I'm sure you you have some uh you know injuries head injuries. Or, or you know, don't do drugs. I think is is a, is a good one. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. One. Were you you were researching like why you're having well, terrors I was, because of nitrous oxide? It, I mean, I never considered it terrors. I mean, I, I was. Uh, <laughs> Steve loved it. I, 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 <laughs> yes, I did, I did. He, he wanted to find out how to replicate that. <laughs> I did love it, but uh, I, I, my experience was that I entered the spirit world on some level, and that I was interacting with angels and demons so there was like super dark shit but there was also like really cool like, like wonderful like uh, loving stuff you know um yeah the, there uh, have you ever told a story on the podcast when you were doing so much whatever that some dude came in and like took a bong load and was yeah. like yeah I, I think i've told that story plenty i love that um <laughs> but uh so, so what about what about head injuries man i mean like uh where are you at do you think with concussions um well, it was actually pretty interesting. Had a great opportunity um, to basically go down to uh, to Texas, and it's one of the the top kind of military. Uh, so I don't know. Have you ever heard of Marcus Luttrell, uh, the lone survivor? Mark Wahlberg played him yeah. in the movie, but okay. his brother, his twin brother Morgan, um, was actually kind of uh, he was a SEAL as well. Got in a bad helicopter crash. Uh, they said he'd never walk again, and he came back on multiple tours. Um, awesome, awesome dude. Uh, so got, he got together with through the boot campaign, um, which is basically trying to help guys that come over with CTE and PTSD and everything to uh, mostly military uh, to heal up and to be able to kind of get back doing what they love to do. So they're not depressed and that kind of stuff. Um, but he came to Nitro Circus and basically just saw the injuries that we were having and said, hey, uh, take your three 
biggest head injury people and come on down. Um, we got the Cooper clinic, um, down in Texas and we've put together the best head trauma doctors, uh, from around the world to basically come out here and, and we can do the best we can of assessing you. Uh, we went with Jim DeChamp, um, who's had quite a few head injuries as well as, um, James Foster, uh, same, we've all hit our heads a lot. And we went down there just to see what the long term was and when what they were thinking. And, you know, there's still a lot that people don't understand about the head. But what's really the biggest takeaway for me was, you know, boxing, um, even football, where, you know, you always talk kind of the same way. You hit the same spot. Um, you know, soccer, uh, you take headers yeah. all the time. You're, mm-hmm. you're always doing it in the same kind of area. Mm-hmm. Um, that was what causes CTE um, more than than even a major, you can have right. one major head injury and obviously have effects for the rest of your life. Um, but for the most part, if you don't hit the same spot over and over again, it's not even having a full concussion. It's, you know, when you get your bell rung a little bit and if right. you get your bell rung again and again and again and again in the same spot before it has a chance to heal, that's what causes the, the brain damage mm-hmm. and long lasting effects. So to be honest, motocross is a pretty good sport because usually when we hit our head hard enough to be knocked out, we're really broken. We don't have a chance to get back on for a while, so right. that's kind of nice. <laughs> I think I think what, what what you're saying is uh, uh, the repetition, a lot of little, the 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 uh, the accumulation of a lot of little uh, head you're like hits. Boxing or like being a lineman, just constantly, or like coming out on stage every night and breaking the... fucking beers on your head. <laughs> Yeah, all, and then all, that, that probably hasn't been tested, but yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I did that, and then when I it. then when I got sober, I'd go on tour and I would come out on stage breaking cans of club soda on my head. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking idiot! I would do that, and then I, and then at a certain point, waking up in the morning, I'd get up and and walk out of bed like on a weird diagonal, like losing my balance. <laughs> like I'd be like, man, I gotta stop hitting my head. <laughs> like an idiot yeah and soccer that's a good those headers like you did, i'm surprised people don't just get knocked out sometimes from hitting those it's no fun man i've played soccer and, and you go head the ball that fucking shit hurts yeah it hurts even if it's not even kicked that hard like sometimes it comes from like 50 feet up and you're hitting it. yeah i have a question uh i want to go back to something actually like scott called you like cool Travis and you sort of like shrugged it off like you don't feel cool or like you think you're not cool is that like uh have you always felt um, that way? Like sort of you're I, uncool? I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I really feel like what I've a dick question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sorry, I'm like, not trying to be a <laughs> you know, like, I wore plaid so much that the double back lip, it started coming back around and everyone's like, oh, I can't believe you wear plaid. And then it was like, oh yeah, you're cool. And then now it's like, oh, you're trying to catch that trend. It's already passed. I'm like, it's not a trend, man. Like I'm just me. And that's been the greatest thing. Motocross, like I was very fortunate from a young age to be good at what I did. And it was, it wasn't a sissy sport, you know, moto, like if mm-hmm. you could do motocross and you could just eat shit. And I was that first person to never quit, to get back up. I mean, my dad would kick my ass if I stopped for any reason. He always goes, if you fall down, you don't know if you're broken until you get back up, you're broken, whatever you broke, it'll fall back under and you'll fall down on your face. If you're not, <laughs> you'll figure it out and you'll get back up and you keep going. So I was always kind of that quiet, shy kid. And right around the second or third grade, um, I started getting a little bit of credibility for being, you know, kind of the the best in my area, the best in, you know, the nation for motocross and got a reputation for being the guy that hucked the biggest jumps, crashed the most, got up quicker, never complained. And that reputation, like I was 15 at the X Games against Metal Militia, Brian Deegan, all those guys you know, world domination and, you know, all trying to be cool. I didn't, at the time, no tattoos, no, like I didn't drink a single drop of alcohol until I was 22. Now I've made up for lost ground, but you know, <laughs> I was focused on, uh, I was focused on being an athlete and I didn't care what anyone thought was cool. It didn't matter to me. I wanted to be the best at what I did. And just doing that gave me that respect. Um, I could walk into any crowd. It didn't matter if it was, you know, hell's angels or bible club you know they were like oh dude yeah you're that guy or Mm -hmm. you know or whatever like and it was it was kind of neat to be able to walk in and out of any realm and just be kind of if not accepted at least respected um for for what you did so so no my job was never it was always kind of people obviously sponsor me so it sells stuff but i mean nitro circus was like metal militia was the cool kids and nitro circus was like you know, the straight A students that just really wanted to, to be the best of what they did or go the biggest. We mm-hmm. don't care if 
like we brought scooters into like the mainstream i mean scooters obviously doing huge and everyone's like no no scooters i'm like right. dude, kids doing awesome and pushing themselves and it's helping our industry hell yeah scooters and then our willie best scooter our out there, willie, he dude. switches over to bmx and wins he's the winningest uh big air bmx rider of all time and he's just a scooter wow. kid so it's like yes this is great dude i fucking love our willie man so after the mtv show then you make like proper nitro circus the movie and uh, that one, like, like the movie industry, I think is kind of kind of weird, where like it's the highest stakes form of gambling, and uh, the 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 question is whether it's going to be like wide theatrical release, at which point you're gambling so much. But the Nitro Circus, I feel like that movie was probably probably a pretty small budget, right? Like. So we, we went too big on our budget. Greg Godfrey, um, our producer, was convinced. He's like, this will be the first 3D film that the 3D actually is. That's going to be what sells it. So we did triple the budget of what we should have done for these brand new 3D cameras, which now cost one-tenth the price of what they did. Um, you know, Tremaine and Knoxville kind of told us, they're like, I don't think you guys quite have that following. It's not a jackass. Jackass relates on all levels. Um, action sports. Any, anything that's a skill stunt, once people see that it's a skill stunt, they just ex- they don't understand it. So they just expect it to work. Or if it doesn't work, then they're just like, that guy's not good at what he does. As opposed to Jackass, where anyone can relate to um, you know, dr- it, getting in a shopping cart and going down a hill really fast. Um, same thing. Nitro Circus, our biggest stunts were the slip and slide, were the big wheels, were the stuff that everyone could relate to. Um, but the problem with the film, in my opinion, looking back on it, was that we were so scared shitless all the way through that we didn't have the camaraderie that Jackass did. We were focused on doing the biggest, best, craziest stunts and doing them to the best they possibly could have been. And we were so focused on that that we forgot when you're making a movie, it's got to be fun. It's got to be exciting. They have to actually feel what we really felt. Man, it breaks my heart to hear you describe... Because first off, I think that, that you guys absolutely have crazy camaraderie. I don't think that that's a, a, a valid criticism. And um, no, it, it it is in my opinion because we had that off off screen, but it wasn't because we were doing a three D film. We didn't get to parlay like everything that we filmed were the stunts. So that movie, the three D film, don't get me wrong, the stunts were good, and we had some crazy stuff. We had some good funny stuff in there, but at the end of the day the camaraderie was everything that happened off screen. So we just didn't do a good job like you guys did of, of capturing that to relate to the general general audience. And we we kind of dumbed it down for the audience where I think the audience, we got to give them more credit. Like they're, they're going to pick up on stuff. You don't right. explain it all out. I'm uh, very much not representative of like the average American or, or moviegoer or, you know, even like my own audience. I'm just not, cause I fucking loved that shit, man. I went to the screening before it came out and I was just like, oh my God, fucking Nitro Circus, hallelujah. I enjoyed it so much, dude. And you guys made a follow-up to it, right? The, was that, what the follow-up to it, was that a, a movie per se or was it? So the follow-up actually is what's gonna be really funny. Um, it still hasn't got, actually got picked up yet, but that I think is better than the movie because it basically showed, I mean, Greg Godfrey spent a half million dollars on an ending that never got seen. And instead he, he wanted a parade, but it was a gay pride parade. I'm like, Greg, we could do like the Hooters parade or <laughs> the, the bikini model tropics parade or whatever. Uh, and it was just, it was very, very odd and it was it was hilarious but it was basically this movie that everyone came on board and everyone's like yeah the plot we're like what plot like greg godfrey kept saying there was a script or a plot or whatever okay yeah do your lines we're like what what like what are you talking about no one gave us any direction we were just doing stunts and then he tried to put the whole thing together at the end from what was in his head it would have worked but he didn't explain it to anybody his vision so (laughs) we did kind of like the, the almost joking on ourselves like how can you possibly raise $5 million to do a film and have no idea three quarters of the way through what, what you're even filming? And I just thought that was um, an attribute both to the fact that we had had enough success that people believed in us and the fact that we still have no idea what we're doing and somehow it's kind of almost working most of the time. Yeah, 
Right. Rock, man. <clears throat> That's a, um, with the, 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 the 3D movie, like, uh, Let's say let's say we want to watch it right now. We go on iTunes. Like, uh, where, where, where is it? Where where does it live? Yeah, no, you can you can go uh, see it on iTunes. Um, I shoot, I don't even know. I thought it came out on Netflix, uh, but I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. So yeah, but it's um, it's still one of the one of the best um, like iTunes action sports uh, films, which was was pretty cool. Like the the audience that saw it liked it. The action Absolutely sports audience fucking loved it. I loved it. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, we we had we did have fun despite being scared to death the whole movie and uh, almost killing Jim and Tommy. Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, and then um, the Nitro Circus uh, action figures was that the follow up to it? That was the next installment. That was, that was yeah. So we had um we had Nitro Circus like our DVD series, um, and then we did uh, Thrill Billy's DVD series. Um, then Thrill Billy's got. So Nitro Circus got picked up on MTV and Thrill Billies got picked up on Fuel uh, back when Fuel was like that thing you just turned on and it was always had action sports and stuff before uh, the MMA took over Fuel. Um, so we had those two things. And then I wanted to get back to the old school music video, like back to, uh, you know, Creatures of Habit and the old whiskey films and just what I grew up on, you know, like mm-hmm. CKY2K and, you uh, know, kind of the back to the culture of what made action sports. Uh, so I came out with uh, action figures and then we did an action figures too. Um, I spent way more basically of my own money making the film than we did, than we made from it. But for me, it was totally, it was awesome just to be able to have an excuse to go out there with our friends in the backyard. And at the end of the day, that helps kind of keep the brand going. And we, so the first action figures, we got uh, Josh Sheehan ended up doing a triple backflip. Uh, Jed Milton uh, and James Foster were racing for a quadruple backflip on a BMX bike. Um, those both got taken out of the film because Nitro said they were too big to be in a, a music video. So <laughs> we put them back in, but it wasn't like they got put on like a uh, network television or whatever. Um, but we were able to do so much and move action sports and airbags and shoot. I had probably $600,000 worth of investment in how do you make a flat bag into a landing bag and what's the best landing bag. And then we have, you know, since that movie came out um, all the top, uh, you know, Olympic federations for all these different countries were basically calling Nitro Circus. How do you keep these guys healthy? What do you do on this? How do you do that? Uh, working with Bag Jump. And it was really, uh, even though financially it didn't make a lot of sense, it was a really cool thing for kind of the future of, of action sports and something that I, I really enjoy doing. I mean, it seems like there's a financial, like a, a big business in, in like evolving and the, the, this whole bag technology. Yeah, but I spent like, you know, like I said, over a half million dollars designing and making these bags and figuring out what to work and not work. And now you can buy them for like $60,000, <laughs> which is still expensive, but, you know, for, for the amount of effort and work that we put in. But I think at the end of the day, high tide floats all ships. I want to yeah. work with ESPN and the X Games. I want to work with, you know, obviously part of nitro in the nitro world games for the big air of action sports. And, um, you know, you got all these X fighters with Red Bull and, um, you know, everybody wants to do their own thing. I think if everyone kind of works together and figures out how can we make this the safest we possibly can to give the riders the longest, like the longevity in the sports, but we have to keep progressing. If we don't progress, you know, we're not gymnastics. It's not about pointing your toes and right. trying to win Olympic medals. Like, I mean, I know skating's in the Olympics and stuff, but at the end of the day, like, I think still for skating, like the video parts are still what I consider. Sure. Like you go out and I, yeah, skating, you can do it perfect once. Yeah. It's competition. That's great. That's one whole side of it. But the other side is what can you do that no one else has ever done? How can you be creative? How can you make a for video sure. part that no one, yeah. You know, and that's, what you guys yeah you know, and the, sure. the one thing we haven't touched on which is like probably the biggest uh you know the, the biggest revenue stream i would imagine is the nitro circus tour i mean you guys routinely have traveled the world like with fucking humongous arenas the overhead for the show has got to be absurd <laughs> but uh the, but the business I, of touring arenas is is probably pretty lucrative right the business was great until COVID. Um, right. It, Nitro is going to be very different um, when this comes out. Because not only, I mean, we had 60 shows uh, canceled this year. Ah, so that's, and not that the shows, they're not really 
money makers, but they keep, you know, unfortunately I had to lay off, uh, you know, quite a few people. There's just no, like even the, the, the riders and trying to figure out, okay, we're switching to YouTube and we're doing these side off events, but you know, instead of everyone getting paid X amount for a stadium show of, you know, 30,000 down in um, South Africa, we're doing drive-in shows where, you know, 1500 people show up and, you know, it's, it's just not, there's not the same right. purse to, to pull from um, or not purse, but uh, sure. <laughs> funding, if you will. Uh, yeah. So it, it's really been tough on the riders. Uh, it's been tough on the whole touring, um, you know, and what we're doing going forward. We don't know what um, COVID, if they're going to allow back, you know, stadiums that we can fill up night and night again, or, or if there's going to be spacing. So, um, you know, huge hit for our industry as a whole, but it's helped all the riders be a little bit more creative instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to go on tour. All the riders have stepped back and say, okay, now I have to make content. If I want to get paid, I have to figure out how to make content, daily content. Sure. But at least a couple big ones a month. Um, and you know, Nitro is doing our, doing our best to, to reach out to the riders and say, okay, whether it gets one view or a million views, um, you know, if you give us something that's three to five minutes longer, we'll, we'll pay you X amount just because, you know, riders are promised, you know, 20, 30, 50 events a year, depending on, on, on the rider and the scale. So, you know, you're never guaranteed that you could always get hurt, but it's in the back of your head. You think, okay, I'm going to have this as a fallback. Well, now everyone's had to change. A lot of guys have gone to, you know, construction. A lot of guys in uh, Australia work in the mines, trying to figure out, like, mm. we realize right now that we are a hobby and yeah. how fortunate we are to be able to live our dream life. Um, you know, it's, it's COVID's been tough. When you talk about the content, uh, is this at the Nitro Circus YouTube channel? Is that, is that what we're promoting to, to get eyeballs on the content? Yeah. So Nitro Circus, we really didn't have a YouTube channel. For instance, we, I mean, there, there was one, but we didn't put a lot into it. Um, but now we're saying, okay, let's get the media house side of this going. Like, what can we do? We've, uh, had a bunch of events on, uh, basically ESPN, the Ocho, uh, but ESPN too, um, because without X games, uh, they've had a lot of world of X and a lot of stuff that, that they didn't have content for. Um, so that's helped us get different shows. Like we've been doing pit bike racing and basically every way we could have fun. Cause especially for a little bit, um, we couldn't have more than a certain amount of people around. So a lot of the, um, you know, the bigger production companies couldn't film, but nitro, we could still send a few sure. GoPros out and have the riders film themselves at home, do whatever they're doing and, and help us manage our sponsorship um, through, Hey, we can't do this event, but we can have this rider do this and, um, you know, find the guys that fit best and that, that want to do that, that kind of content. And, um, you know, our YouTube channel, we're basically, we've had an amazing opportunity to bring so many um, shows that we kind of pushed aside or buried for a little bit. Um, like the race to rebuild. If you guys have a chance to check this out, um, we basically went and when, uh, Hurricane Maria, uh, devastated Puerto Rico, uh, three riders, myself included, uh, came out of retirement and raced the biggest motocross race on earth. Um, the motocross of nations for team Puerto Rico, then went down with all of our construction buddies, um, all the ramp builders, all the welders that we have that normally build ramps and stuff who all didn't really have a lot going on. And we went down, uh, to Puerto Rico and, and we put roofs on, on four houses and rebuilt a couple motocross tracks that were down there. And. Um, went to a school and donated uh, a lot of people helped, uh, you know, kind of uh, helped us to, to be able to give back um, to a territory of the U S so stuff like that, that would never normally have seen the light of day. Um, we got to, to document better and, and uh, try to try to do the best we could during the time. The race to rebuild. That sounds like a good mm -hmm. balance between action and philanthropy. Yeah. You don't have to know anything about motocross to like it, but my, uh, you know, my five-year-old daughter sat through the whole thing because it does, if you get a chance, it's, uh, it's, it's worth a watch. And that lives on. So that lives on, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> Google. It lives that, on that, Google. Take uh, the rest of the way. Right. Sorry. Fail. Just, oh, it's all it good, out, man. Just, just, just look it up. I'm sure you'll find it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Fuck, man, I got to jump on my, my psychiatrist call, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best exit I've ever heard. I do. Got to go to psychiatrist. Uh, dude, it's 1101 right now. Fuck, man. Well, uh, okay, let, 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 run, 
let's quickly run through where we're sending people. Like uh, we got uh, Nitro Circus on Instagram. It's a constant flow of epic shit that I'm so I love following. So everybody follow Nitro Circus on Instagram. Travis Pastrana on Instagram. Yeah, you know, just uh, it's not he's not uncool. He's fucking lovable. Little dorky, hmm. a lot lovable. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's going to be my next. I'm putting that on my Instagram. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, um, hey, be sure to check out Jim Connor. But hey, for me, you know what? I, I just want people to go out there to get off the video games, to have some fun, to get outside, <laughs> yeah. and to freaking, man, get on your scooter, get on your, your BMX bike, your dirt bike. That that's I'm passionate about that. My kids love that. You pump tracks, BMX tracks, whatever you motocross tracks. Go have some fun and get outside. That's cool. I, I fucking love that, dude. I I, I love that. And uh, oh, our Willie, he's our Willie on Instagram. God, he's fucking. You fantastic. gotta check it. You gotta check him out. I fucking yeah, love sure. him so much, man. Um, all, all the Nitro Circus rider Wheels. Fucking, Wheels is an official Nitro Circus rider, right? He's unbelievable. That dude. Backflip 360 in a wheelchair. He just Damn. just threw his arms off. Oh, yeah. Like a normal wheelchair, not like anything special, just <laughs> off. And he built his own chairs. Pretty cool. Right. right. Oh my God. So so great. Um, well, hey, brother, fucking thank you so much for doing this, man. What an honor. And uh, dude, I just I, I really appreciate you, man. I'm a huge fan. Well, right back at you. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here and uh, look forward to seeing more of your episodes coming up soon, man. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you so much, Travis. Later, Travis. Right on, brother. Thanks, dude. Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, I hope you guys laughed as hard as we did, man, because, God, that was fun, dude. Ah, here we are again. You special people who stuck around to the very end, I want you to know how much you mean to me. Um, let's let Travis know that we enjoyed this. What a good guy, huh? And um, what else, man? Yeah, I was that much of a fucking pussy on Nitro Circus, okay? So off my back, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>